This video is my attempt to share with you how I modified my Suzuki 2006 LS650 by replacing its originally pitifully sounding horn with a pair of horns of high strength and character. With these replacement horns, I'll bet others on the road will hear you. That said, nothing in this video is written in stone. Replacing your motorcycle's horn is totally at your discretion, and you assume all risk for doing so. How you do it is your responsibility. My methodology is just that, the way I did it. It is your choice to imitate or copy what I did and how I did it but you are responsible for any problems encountered along the way or the final outcome. I disclaim all liability for your actions. Cheers, and above all, ride safe. Harbor Freight pair of horns, 12 volt DC relay included. Some cable ties. An inline blade style fuse holder. 10 amp blade style fuses, 14 gauge female spade style terminal ends and terminal eyes, 14 gauge inline barrel splices, red and black insulated 14 gauge wire about two six foot lengths, an aluminum strip for the brackets one and a half inches wide by 12 inches by no more than 64 thousandths thick, a little thinner is better, a pair of crimpers, a pair of diagonal cutters, a glue gun, half inch drive ratchet, extension, 10 millimeter socket, a 100 watt soldering iron, some rosin core flux and 6040 solder, a flat file, a round file, either needle nose or hemostats uh, to disconnect the vacuum line from the carburetor, one quarter and five sixteenths inch drill bits, a hacksaw, a vise, a number one and number two Phillips screwdriver, remove the seat and gas tank as shown in other videos. Remove the left side cover, gaining access to the negative battery terminal. Disconnect the negative battery terminal and assure it can't settle back into a position touching the terminal again. I tied mine back with a piece of string. Now dismount the original horn and disconnect the horn's terminals. Reinstall the screws temporarily. Route a length of red wire from the original horn's position along the large harness and up along the backbone to the rear and to within about four inches of the battery's positive terminal. Take advantage of any existing clamps. I'll call this the battery source wire. And while you're doing this, look for any signs of chafing on all the wire harnesses exposed. Remove the toolkit cover to expose the positive terminal of the battery and disconnect it. Using the appropriately sized terminal eye for the battery positive screw, crimp it to one end of the fuse holder. Advice. If the barrel on the terminal eye where you insert the wire to be crimped is too wide for the wire, strip the wire twice as much as you would normally and fold it back upon its bare self as I did. Insert and then crimp. Caution. Leave the fuse holder empty. Do not install at this time. Using a barrel splice, crimp the other end of the inline fuse holder to the end of the red wire you just routed to near the battery. Now attach the battery's positive screw, the newly crimped terminal eye, and the main positive cable back onto the positive battery terminal. Reattach the battery's negative cable with its screw, and remove any unnecessary slack in the wire along the newly routed path to the original horn's area. Wow. The schematic included with the horns is poorly written. The wiring to the relay's terminals is okay, but look how they diagrammed the wires to the horns. Here's how it should have been drawn. 
The horn's terminals are not polarized and they are completely isolated from the frame ground, uh, motorcycle ground. And that's why you must provide a negative ground for them to the frame of the motorcycle. Either one of each horn's terminals can be positive. The other, therefore, is the negative or ground terminal. It's your choice. Now, back at the original horn's position, take the horn relay, which came with the new horns, and attach the original horn's connectors to the terminals 85 and 86 of the relay. Don't worry about polarity, it doesn't matter here. Install the 10 amp fuse into its fuse holder now. It's time to test the relay. Hold the relay between a finger and thumb and turn the ignition switch to on. Press your horn button. You should feel the contacts of the relay operate. You may even hear them close too if it's quiet enough. Success! Turn the ignition switch off and proceed. Note. After you hook up the relay wiring, you're going to affix the relay to the large wiring harness just above the original horn's mounting area. The relay contacts, the bottom of the relay, should face the rear of the LS650 and downwards a little so minimum moisture will intrude and that which may will drain out. Making sure you'll have enough of the already strung battery source wire to attach to the relay when mounted to the harness so it won't interfere with the gas tank Crimp a terminal end to the end of the battery source wire and attach it to either terminal 30 or 87. It doesn't matter, your choice. Look at the supply diagram of the relay for contact numbering and position. Next, crimp another terminal end to a new piece of wire, red wire, and lead it from the relay up along the main harness, up through the wire bale between the forks, and up over to where the horns will be leaving a good 12 or so inches to spare. Attach that wire's terminal to the empty relay contact. That's whichever contact you didn't use for the battery source wire above, either 30 or 87. At this point, all the relay terminals should now be occupied. Now, affix the relay to the wiring harness using its mounting tab hole and one or two plastic wire ties. Run a black wire from the original horn's forward mounting screw up to the harness above and alongside the red wire, going up to the new horn's position for their ground. Leave sufficient length for connection to the new horns and then some. Crimp a terminal eye to the end of that wire by the old horn mounting screw and attach it to the frame. Don't rely on any connection ahead of the steering head for grounding the new horns. The original horn's mounting screw is great. It assures a good low resistance ground. I had a scrap piece of aluminum left over from a previous project. I was fortunate that it was suitable for the bracket blanks. I cut two pieces of five inch length for the brackets. After cutting out your bracket blanks, take the flat file and run it over all but blanks edges. Round off the corners too. They'll slice you in a heartbeat, given the chance. Then I undid the forward handlebar clamping screws to where I could slip one end of a bracket blank between the upper clamp and the base of the handlebar clamp, such that it touched the handlebar. Then I centered the brackets as best I could and used the clamp's screws, pressing and turning it to mark the metal and give me a center where to drill my handlebar hole with the 5 16 inch drill. I ended up a little off because my drill press walks bits, so this is where the rat tail file came into play. Likewise, the other bracket was marked and drilled. Then I chose how much distance I needed between the bracket's handlebar hole and a horn's mounting hole and drilled that hole, one in each bracket. When mounted, I didn't want any chafing against cables or wire. I determined and marked where to create a 90 degree bend in each bracket between the holes, a little bit inside of where the top edge of the horn would be once mounted. I made the bends by clamping each bracket vertically in a vise, then used the palm of my hand to gently bend the bracket to form the 90 degree angle. Mount the horns to their respective brackets and then each assembly to the handlebar clamps, each between a clamp and its base. 
You can now bend the brackets gently downwards at the handlebar clamps to achieve a suitable angle of the horns as I've done. Check the position of the handlebars and tighten the clamps to secure the handlebars and horn brackets. Loosen and rotate the horns to position them as desired. Determine how you're going to connect the horns terminals. I did it as shown to minimize any chance of wires chafing or crossing over and, again, to minimize any rain's intrusion. Outside terminal to outside terminal and inside to inside. Worked fine for me. Now you will electrically parallel the horns by wiring the battery source lead from the relay to one contact of the left horn and then to another contact of the right horn. Then the remaining two horn contacts are wired to the grounding wire which comes from the frame ground underneath the relay. As shown I decided to connect the closest terminals together and the farthest together. To do this I prepared an appropriate length of wire to connect the two closest terminals of the horns. You'll notice that one of the ends has about twice the insulation removed, which will leave about a quarter inch exposed after crimping. I mounted the short jumper to the two horns terminals with that exposed area on the inside connector closest to the relay. Then I trimmed the battery supply wire to length and wrapped its end around that exposed copper wire on that terminal and soldered it. I did the same to the other pair of contacts on the horns using the black ground wire. Time to test the horns. If you're satisfied with your installation, use the wire ties to secure the wires. Reinstall the side panels, the gas tank, and the seat. And there you have it. Incidentally, just the morning after I finished my installation, I was following a big truck wannabe around on intersection's right turn at about a 20-foot distance. We were doing about 15 miles per hour. Not 30 feet after the turn, he stopped dead mid-lane. Then he put on his left turn signal and then put the truck into reverse. I gave him a blast at the horns and by gum he noticed me then and took off down the road. With the original horn, he might have backed right over me. Oh yeah, they definitely cause heads to turn. See you down the road, take your time, wear a helmet and gloves, and ride safe. Cheers.